time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everybody, to the MC Variety Hour, except there is no C to my M. Miles here. I'm reaching out to you to say hello. Life has been hell, and I'm here to give you another tidbit. Don't worry, guys. We'll put out massive episodes at some point, but right now, we're kind of in a rebuilding our own life situation, so we have that going for and against us. So, here's Miles. Crawford has been doing her due diligence and putting out small little bits for you guys to listen to while I attempt to create a sense of normalcy in my life, which has not been normal for a fucking month. But before I get into that rampage, I want to do a few quick and first and foremost shout outs. First of all, it's Mother's Day. So mom, I don't even know if you listen, but if you do, I love you. Man, this has been a hard month and I appreciate your strength through all of it. To all the other mothers, trust me, if you listen to this podcast, you'll understand how much more I appreciate you than I ever have before. And that is my drink that you hear. I was drinking some beer before because nobody bought me whiskey for Mother's Day. So now I'm just drinking some cherry vodka on the rocks. That is what it is. Oh, well. I also want to give a shout out to a amazing group of podcasters from the No Phony Network. Hashtag No Phony Network. You can just also go on Twitter and put at No Phony. You can visit the website at www.nophonynetwork.com and there's about 25 podcasts on there. And over the last month, I've had a few moments of just debacle and emotional shit. And here is a majority group of guys and there are some new female broadcasters out there so thanks but uh you know I went through some shit and I on a few nights kind of got on our discord page and just kind of went off and they were there it's completely supportive and understanding and when you're kind of going through some shit in your life and you are up late at night with your thoughts and everyone's sleeping and you don't know who to turn to and you turn to a group of strange people that you've never met before but the only thing you have in common is a network you share and that you guys are all podcasters it's it's so amazing and i love you guys and thank you so much for tolerating my moments so no phony network follow them listen to all the podcasts they're all amazing all of them all of them. I listen to sports podcasts. I never in my life would have ever thought that I would listen to sports podcasts, but I do. Bats and Balls, BS3. I mean, I listen to all kinds of podcasts now because of this network, and it's great. I mean, obviously, I have my, you know, Politics with Dummies and the Punk Rock and Politics that uh, is a part of that network and Know Your Draft and uh, Hypothetically Great I I listened to those podcasts before they joined, but I really just, I love them a little bit more now than I've ever loved them before. So thanks guys. You do have a special place in my heart. So on to where in the world is Miles? Well, for those of you uh, who don't know, uh, my sister on April 9th went through what they call SCAD for short long term is called spontaneous coronary artery dissection. You will be learning more about women's health over the next few podcasts with Miles and Crawford. We are variety hours, so we will talk about other things, but just so you know, that is something that you probably will hear amongst our podcast over the next few weeks off and on. So SCAD, memorize it, Google it, look into it. SCAD is a condition that 80% of the time happens to women. Now, majority of that time that happens to women, it happens to them postpartum. With my sister, that was not the case as she gave twins birth to her twins last time 10 years ago. So um, we're not sure why this happened. My sister is 39 years young. She is tall. Um, but she's not obese. She's not completely unhealthy and she's not completely healthy. She lives life like all the rest of us do. You know, she eats food that's maybe not the best for her. She smokes some cigarettes from time to time, but we don't know what the contributing factors were on this. It could be genetics. Uh, they're not saying that it is yet because 
they can't do genetic testing yet because, you know, as you will hear, there's not room for that. But SCAD is a spontaneous coronary artery dissection, and it is a very scary thing that happened to my sister. She was working at a small hospital in this amazing town called Lisbon, North Dakota. If you look up Lisbon, it's a very tiny, tiny town in North Dakota. Um, But she was lucky enough to work at a job uh, that put her in a hospital that morning, and she was doing her paperwork, and she coughed, like coughed, like... I've got a tickle in my throat. I'm going to cough, but that cough was very hard. And she said, oh, fuck, that hurts. And then she went down. Uh, When she coughed, her artery dissected from her heart. And that is how this entire situation began. So let's start there. When your artery dissects from your heart, your heart stops beating. My sister, Rachel, happened to be in a spot in which everything that she needed was at where it needed to be at. Defibrillators, nurses, doctors, all of them right there. They were able to revive my sister, get her stable, and transfer her up to Fargo, North Dakota, which is a bigger hospital with more medical uh, equipment than what Lisbon had. Fargo was still pretty, she was still very, very shaky. No idea. Percentage of life was at 5% chance of living at that point. They were able to get her on this machine called ECMO, E-C-M-O. And that machine is basically your life support. It takes all the blood out of your body and it puts blood back in your body and it oxygenates it. It stops your heart and your lungs from doing any of the work um, and it does all the work for those organs. So they were able to get her on this ECMO machine, get her on a helicopter and get her out to Minneapolis. And that is where I joined. So... I live in Ohio. Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota is about a 10 and a half hour drive from where I live. You get a call on Monday that your sister has a 5% chance of living and you're running around the house. And this is what your head says. (laughs) And then is your head for a while. And I get my shit together and we are, we call my husband's amazing parents. They're so great. And we say, we need you to take the kids for a few days. So they take the kids Me and my husband pack up our bags as quickly as possible, and we jump in the vehicle. Pillows, blankets, drop off the kids, just go, 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 go. And we go. I mean, we sleep for a little while at gas stations and whatnot, and at that point, it's still fucking cold, and so you can't really just turn your car off, and you don't want to waste gas, and there's this whole thing. But we make it to Minneapolis uh, on Tuesday morning. I'm able to go to her room. And I see my sister who I haven't seen in about five years because, again, we live... Now, Lisbon from Finley is about a 14-hour drive. Ah, probably like a 15-hour drive, actually, um, from where I live. And her nor I are very rich, so it's not like we can just jump on planes and go whenever we want to go visit our sisters. You know, it's time and money. We both have children, jobs, the whole works, you know? So it's been a while since we've last seen her. She was home uh, last year for a friend's wedding, but I saw her for all but like, you know, a handful of hours, which was nice. Don't get me wrong. But it wasn't like seeing my sister. So the last time I saw my sister, like really saw her, had been at least five years. I mean, I walk into this hospital room and she's inflated with fluids, machine on machine on machine on machine. Talk to the nurses. They uh, talk about this ECMO machine being hooked up to her, but the original, I don't know, cath line or whatever was too small and they needed to get her a new one and they needed to put it into from her left leg to her right leg. Um, With the ECMO machine, there's only so many arteries that they can connect it to. You have one on your left leg, one on your right leg, uh, one on your left arm, and obviously then right into your chest. So the left leg was out, right leg it needs to go in. And they're getting ready to move her, to move her downstairs to get this procedure done. Um, And so I got the chance to at least see her little face, kiss her forehead, let her know how much I loved her. And I go outside the room and I'm standing in the hallway and I'm talking to my husband. And he he was in the room with me, don't get me wrong, you know, but we're out there. And the two other family rooms they had uh, in the ICU on that floor were, were full of other families who were going through their own tragedies. And I didn't want to, I don't know, I just, I didn't want to be in there. So we're standing out there and we hear her room getting cold. And 
my husband reassures me that, well, they're talking about moving her. So, I mean, you know, that's why they're calling people. I'm like, no, I think they already had them on board. And then you see them, the nurses, with these backpacks of weird medical equipment, and they're running. They're all running, and they're all running into your sister's room. My sister's room, you could see right through the emergency doors um, into the ICU. They were all going to her room, and that feeling just, it stops you. You don't know what to do because you don't want to be in anybody's way, but you don't want to not be there, but you are going to be in their way if you're in there. I've watched enough medical shows to know being in there is not going to do anybody any good. When they went to move her, the cath literally just fell out, and 21 pints of her blood fell out as well. They rushed her down, and, uh, you know, in the meanwhile, there's a nurse, and they grab you and your husband, and you're running down stairwells, and you go to a waiting room, and you got nothing to do except for call your family and say, I need you guys to get here soon. They're talking about things and I don't want to be responsible for any decision making. I need somebody else to be here. Damn it. They're on their way. They had been in Fargo all night. Nobody had slept. They were, they were on their way. I know they were. Everybody knows they were. It just was scary. I'm sitting in a room and a doctor comes in. I don't even know an hour or so later, two hours later. And he's looking at me, and he's, it's not good. And I knew the heart, you know, my heart, just, it sank. And it wasn't good. They had to perform CPR on her for 45 minutes, and uh, they don't know how long her brain was was without oxygen. And But they were getting her stable again. And then everything becomes surreal. People start coming into the hospital, you know, her husband and her kids and, and your mom and your dad and your sister and her sons and people you didn't even know and I'm sitting there and I'm talking to my husband and this girl looks over and she's like you're Rachel's sister Uh, how do you know me well my sister married this wonderful guy and that happened to be that wonderful guy's sister and we're talking and she knew who I was simply by the tone of my voice because me and my sister sound so much alike And so now I get to meet this technical sister-in-law that I never even knew that I had. And little by little, days go on days go on days. There's no answers except for she's stable. She's on life support. She's on dialysis. She's on everything that you can imagine her being on. And we've got nothing else. I want to stay in Minneapolis for the rest of my life. And I want to wait until she gets better. But, you know... You can get hospital discounts at hospitals, like at the hotels nearby, but the hotels aren't free. I think everybody knows that I'm not exactly a rich woman with the greatest credit score. So, you know, we could afford and we stayed for a few days. We all shared hotel rooms and hotel costs and food costs because everybody needs to eat or most of all just drink because we don't know what the fuck else to do in this time. All the meanwhile, a winter storm has to hit Minneapolis just has to fucking come 18 inches of snow quarter inch of ice so we had to get on the road a day and a half earlier than what we wanted to and we left that Friday and we got on the road and we drove home you know my job they told me take as much time as you want but I needed to see my kids and I needed to go back to normalcy for a few days or unless you know worst case scenario happens so you go home and you're waiting You're waiting for an update. You're waiting to find out what's going on. And it's so scary. Every hour, on the hour, you're just waiting and waiting and waiting. But you start kind of living a little bit. And the news starts coming in that your sister is responding. There's brain activity. She's squeezing hands. She's opening eyes. (laughs) No fucking way. (laughs) She is. Ah, That's so great. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that... 11 days later, I get in my car all by myself and I drive all the way to Minneapolis. I take a two-hour pit stop at this really great place right outside of Chicago. Very safe little place if you ever need to sleep. It's called a Blooming Bloomington Oasis. I don't know. Very nice place. Very sweet. Tell the gas station attendant that you're sleeping out there. They keep an eye on your car. All is well. But I sleep for like two or three hours. Get back in my, you know, I'm, actually I'm still in my car. And I continue the drive. And uh, I show up that Friday morning and I'm standing outside of her room and her curtain is closed. Just wait. Just wait. You can't wait to see this. What what can I wait to see? And I go in my sister's room, a sister who 11 days ago had every machine hooked up to her. Her ventilator is out. 
She's looking at me. She is confused as fuck as to why I'm there. And she's whispering and she nods and she recognizes me. And the entire world just stops. It's going to be okay. Her husband joins me about an hour or two later as he was making his way from Lisbon. Because again, they have their own kids and he was giving them their sense of normalcy. And we're sitting there and we're talking. We're listening to her curse at the nurses because she wants to go back home and she wants to go back to work and she doesn't have any idea what just happened to her over the last 11 days and it's 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 so exhilarating it's so promising it's so great it's becoming nightfall and they're going to sedate her and let her sleep for the evening and give up her pain meds you know keep her less agitated keep her warm be let her be a little less scared because you can tell that she's in fear of what's happening so we leave we have some dinner we go to bed we wake up the next morning we meet up downstairs we have a little bit of breakfast she's doing so well we can't wait we're we're excited you know but we have breakfast first because you know we know that we're gonna probably spend the entire day in her room and we don't even know if we're gonna even leave to go eat because we're just gonna be so great we're just gonna be able to sit and hold her hand and and just watch tv together and just talk But we get back to her room and everything happened all over again. But an hour before we got there, she flatlined. They don't know why. And she's going back on every machine that she just came off of. (sighs) Blow. That was a blow to the gut. And you can't do anything. They have to take it back to surgery. All these things are happening and you can't do anything. Pace around a hospital, walk around the block. That's what we did. We walked and walked and walked and walked. And then we came back, and there she is, sedated, ventilator, dialysis, ECMO, all of it. It's back on. Her cardiologist was the best. Her cardiologist, Jason Bartos, look him up, Google him. Send him a thank you card, because I'm not even sure if I can ever put into words. But he sat on the floor. Me and Lee, again, were just sitting on the floor, just waiting for news, because we didn't want to go sit in that family lounge room area. It's so depressing. And he sat and he talked to us and he was real with us and he was sympathetic and he was kind and he is everything that you could imagine any doctor on television to be I mean he's not like as handsome as all the doctors on television by any means but when you want somebody to tell you anything this doctor was it and we know that we're back we're back at the bottom of the hill we were at the top of the hill getting ready to rock that rock, to push it over, and to start the recovery. And instead, the rock was heavy, and we fell all the way back down to the bottom. And this would happen. Some good news, some bad news, some good news, some bad news, some good news, some bad news. Last weekend, we were there, and all of us could have almost sworn it was going to be the last time that we were going to see her. But that Sunday, as we were an hour or two before getting ready to hit the road... She squeezed some hands and she acknowledged us. Five flat lines later, she's still surviving. Brain activity and all. And today on Mother's Day, we got to hear that they're putting her in a chair again, letting her sit up a little bit on her own. Ventilator's still in, but it's turned way, way down, so she's doing a lot of the breathing on her own. BP medication's being turned down to find out what her actual blood pressure is. And there's hope. There's hope for the first time in a long time, but she's still in the ICU and we have a very long road ahead of us. And, and until she's at least out of the ICU, things have been very touch and go and very scary and very hard to deal with because she's 39 years young. No explanation. The only explanation they have right now is that she's a woman. She's had three arteries dissect and another one rupture. And there's no reason why it's happening. There's no, this is the reason outside the fact that she's a woman. And that's all. So if you're a man listening to this, look at your woman and do me a favor and make sure that she has gone to her doctor recently. I'm not saying that any of those things can be prevented by seeing your local gynecologist or your local health physician, but... If you're experiencing anything weird or abnormal or different, 
my sister hadn't been feeling well for a few months and we thought it was one thing and it was completely not even the thing that we thought it was. So there are things that can happen to your body that you don't know. Women, especially because we carry estrogen and estrogen has a problem with carrying blood clots. Me, I have what they call factor five laden or Leiden, however you want to pronounce it. Factor five can do one of two things. You can get blood clots that are on the outside of your veins or blood clots that are on the inside of your veins. Inside of your veins, that's when you're going to have your DVTs, your deep vein thrombosis, and the clots that go inside of your lungs. Most of all, clots that can go to your brain and cause aneurysms. I have the other kind that sit on the outside of my veins. Not to say that they can't go on the inside of my veins, but I have been lucky that any of the clots that I do have, they're usually all in my leg and they're all on the outside. So I have to, you know, make sure to walk around and make sure to sit. Can't walk too much, can't sit too much. It's a fun little balance game that I have to play. And women, because of our estrogen levels, especially those who are on birth control, are a lot more, especially, especially those who are on birth control, have a lot higher of a risk of getting clots in their lungs and in their brains. So if you're on birth control and it's estrogen based, I would talk to your doctor about that and about your risk factors and get some blood draws taken. Something simple, a simple preventative health measure. There's five different blood draws they do. It checks things for like factor five, C deficiency, I deficiency, and something else. And that little test right there can solve a lot of problems you could be having with your birth control. I was on Mirena for a lot of years. I made my husband get a vasectomy after I found out about Factor V. Mirena is a better birth control for me because it's testosterone based and not estrogen based. Estrogen based would have probably caused my blood clots to be a lot worse. And who knows, maybe that's why I had epilepsy for a lot of years was small little clots that were going through my body and causing my neurons to misfire and let me have seizures because for a long time I was on estrogen-based birth control, but we'll never know. So right now we're in the new uphill battle of getting my sister out of the ICU. And I'm in the uphill battle of learning how to go back to a doctor and be more effective in my health and to try new things like actually really working out three days a week and actually eating healthy and not just losing weight, but to start a different lifestyle. And that isn't to be preachy or tell everybody they need to quit doing what they're doing right here and right now and blah, blah, blah. Just live your life to the best capacity, but do me a few solids after listening to this. Make sure you have one preventative health measure doctor's appointment set up in the next month. Two, please. I don't have a will, and I will have a will by the end of summer. I don't like the wills. Ugh, having a will is gross. You gotta fucking talk to somebody about how you're gonna die. Oh, gross. Oh, God. But I've at least talked to all my family members about my wishes. You know, how I want to be buried. Um, how long do you keep up this? How if this does happen to me? How long do I want them to make life-saving measures? I want them, of course, to take life-saving measures for me, but do I want to be on life support for months and months and months? And what kind of quality of life am I going to have? All those things can happen in an instance. And I get it. Going to a, a, a lawyer can be expensive. I know that you can get your will done online for like 35 bucks, and all you have to do is get it notarized. But you really should find some way to make sure that at least for the most part, your entire family around you knows what you would want. Because I know we're on the uphill, but when we were on the downhill, nobody has any idea what my sister, what her true wishes were. Which I know once she's out of it, she definitely would have wanted them, of course. Who doesn't want to live? She's got like 10 year olds and kids and all that, of course. But we also live in America. Health insurance isn't free and medical bankruptcy is going to be around the corner because we're talking millions of dollars of medical care right here that no one with enough fundraisers can be able to do unless Bill Gates wants to come and save us. 
Bill Gates, if you're listening, Bill Gates, please, Bill Gates, seriously. I'm just asking. I'm not asking for a miracle. I'm not asking you to take care of my entire family. I'm asking you to reach out to me and you can pay for my sister's hospital bills. That's all I'm asking for because they're going to be in the millions of dollars. And I promise you, nobody in my family is that rich. So make sure that you guys know these kind of things, though. Make sure that you have an understanding and that your loved ones, husband, wife, mother, father, brothers, and sisters, never, if they ever, ever, ever have to have a conversation about what you would want, that you at least have something outlined. Even if it's not notarized, if it's not to a lawyer, that you've at least had the conversation. Because I don't want to go to a lawyer and I don't want to pay people money but I've at least had the conversation with everybody about how I want to at least be buried when I die. And I don't know about life-saving measures yet still, but, you know, one step at a time. Things aren't always easy, and this wasn't meant to be a depressing podcast, but it was meant to be a realistic podcast to let you guys know that Miles' life has really sucked for the last month, but things are looking better, and that our podcast are going to probably be some more tidbits in between more than they are going to be a regular thing but we're going to try to get back on track and until we can we appreciate you guys for your support and your love feel free to donate to our patreon page which you can do by just going to patreon and finding miles and crawford variety hour you can donate to us on podbean um because hell we could always use any kind of upgrade to the equipment especially if we have to do this more long term in the aspect of driving back and forth. I would like to have like a uh, one of those recorders that you could take with you um, and, and it actually be wonderful and not have to worry about packing up amongst everything else, a computer and a microphone and trying to find a quiet space and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, it would be appreciated. And if not, it is what it is. I know that right now I'm behind on giving a gift bag to the... Um, what is that? The I owe I owe one of our, our local goodie bags. I promised this back in Easter. Back in Easter. I uh I, I'm so far behind in life though. But um to you, hashtag blackout, we uh which is on Twitter at H T A G B L A C K O U T Pod Hashtag blackout podcast. I know I owe you a goodie bag. I promised it weeks ago. And I, like I said, this is my very first weekend home. And this upcoming week, I'm hoping to get my shit together. So I'll send you a goodie bag. And for all of you out there, if you're not going to take care of yourself, look at your loved ones and make sure that they are. And if anything else, reach out to your sisters and brothers and moms and dads and all those ones that live maybe a little bit too far for you that you don't see all the time and just let them know that you love them because shit like this comes at you real fucking fast but don't worry we'll be back together miles and crawford will we'll talk about some upbeat things some women's health some political drama i'm sure crawford would love to bring in some of her shenanigans as always and until then guys thank you for all the support and dedication even if it's not ten thousand listeners it's you and you matter. Thanks. Bye.